So yeah, this is the orchard and basically the orchard was, it was developed in 2011, one year after stage two was developed. Um, the idea of the orchard is very much, it's kind of like the next step really. So you know, you go from stage one uh, New Zealand native garden, you then go to the different plant habitats in stage two. And the orchard is the chance for children and indeed some adults to just learn about where, how their fruit, you know, where fruit comes from. Also, what season fruit ripens in. So, you know, mm. I mean, most of you would know this already. I mean, citrus obviously ripens in the winter. Plums and apples are in the summertime. Um, one thing I would say about this area, which I really think it lacks for a botanic garden, is the lack of interpretation. I mean, you probably notice going through the children's garden, there's very good interpretation about the, you know, the wood pigeon and the prairie mm. tree, about desert plant habitat, etc. Here could do with a lot more interpretation. And to give you a good example of that, we've got these um, Pizanawa bananas that I need to thin out a lot more. <laughs> um, but what anyway, they are you know they grow really well. They give us give us a good supply of bananas. Visitors can come here and see that. But we I personally think we need to actually say you know they they are performing as well as they're performing because of where they're growing in the orchard. Mm -hmm. You know, we, if you if you think about it we have a uh, northeast facing aspect, nice sheltered corner. It's interestingly enough, and this is um, <laughs> this is a little bit of a design flaw. The waterfall actually has a bit of a leak. Um, the positive thing about the leak is that it percolates <laughs> through to the bananas. Don't fix the leak. <laughs> but you, you know, there's there's great scope to actually educate people about putting the right plant, the right fruit mm. tree in the right place. I mean, mm. and that kind of ties into Ben, I remember Ben Soil and Health talk about the issues that a lot of people have. They, you know, they take, take this tree home and they want to put it they where they want to put it mm. without actually sort of looking at their overall area and really thinking about what are the you know what are the different attributes of of your site or your orchard um, and to me a botanic garden is it's kind of like a I mean really it's you can kind of liken it to a bit of a plant museum mm -hmm. in a sense well I mean plants keep growing we have to keep my lawns and and all of that jazz but you know people can actually come in here, see something really thriving and get the explanation too. So that's, to me, that's the sort of the, the next thing in this area we need to work on. We, um, we are kind of going down a little bit of a, it does slope down a little bit. So mm. up here is, generally speaking a bit drier as you go down it gets a little bit wetter a little bit more slightly more exposed so I, some of you have probably heard about the you know the permaculture concept of food forest goods or at, at the very least classing your fruit trees into groups based on where in the world they grow. So, you know, to give you an example, you've got peaches, plums, eggplants, apricots. They are, by and large, from the Mediterranean. They like drier conditions. Um, you know, there's an opportunity to also have, you know, to actually interpret that and, and showcase that. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of my mm -hmm. sort of that. That's what you know. That's what I believe this area could could show more of and work towards. Do you have any olive trees, Mediterranean? We're not in this orchard, Adrian. So one thing I one thing I would say is this orchard. Its fundamental objective is to really inspire children and school groups about uh, fruit trees and we, we really want to keep the fruit trees sort of, uh, you know, in a way relevant to what school kids would, uh, would be interested in eating. Um, and you know, in that sense, olives kind of, olives sort of fall out of that I bracket. I think this was adult because you didn't say it was a children's area. Yeah, well, that's the thing, like, yes, it's a children's garden, but a lot of times adults also also benefit. And we, we don't, we, we never try to actually, dis, you know, discriminate in that sense. It was originally planned that we would have a mowing strip just going down here, and in the springtime, um, there would be a mass of daffodil bulbs that would come up and we actually mass planted daffodil bulbs here you know quite a few years ago and every spring this side and this side was not mown um, we also wanted to encourage um, I wouldn't call them meadow plants but <laughs> things like um, I mean, they're loosely weeds or, you know, what you'd call sort of ephemeral plants and, you know, things like musky storksbill. I don't know if any of you have seen musky storksbill, but it's got, it's quite a, it's quite an attractive weed with, with a sort of an arching tassel-like purple head. Um, but, you know, what actually happened is we got, got all of this. All, yeah. So, the kai, you know, kaiku. Kaikuyu is, I mean, I just... But the clover's helpful. Yeah, but in all honesty, what I find over time is the Kaikuyu actually starts to... It's taking all the food. It's taking all the food It does, well. yeah, absolutely, so you're right. It would be great if we could plant nettle, but we're not allowed. Well, <laughs> some people know they can, but... <laughs> But there were still lemon balm, dills, things like that, all supposed to be good companion plants in an orchard and clover, yeah. red clover maybe. And I thought, well, maybe you could do some yeah, research. Yeah, well, my... Maybe you could do some tiny research. Kelly over there, so lots of flowering cherries, camellias. Um, which, you know, brings, brings the cats of bird life. Mm. Contain it a little bit more um, because it, you can see it's starting to grow into the nearby pejoas and the plums. You know, we had a lemon tree Beautiful. over there. Um, we had plum tree. We had another plum tree. Two more plum trees in there, and they just got. You know, some of some of the plum trees in there were just struggling, um, and I do think it is because. Well, this is only my this is only my opinion. These um, beautiful big plum trees, I and I'm probably Ben would Ben would be able to speak to this better than I could. But these big plum trees are growing on, you know, you know, every tree has, has a different root stock. Mm -hmm. These plum trees are on a much more vigorous root stock. Um, so, you know, if you have a more vigorous root stock, it's actually, um, it's obviously really anchoring itself well into the soil and it's also drawing a lot more from the soil to give you, you know, to give you a, a much bigger tree. Um, and that's where I think if you're going to go down the road of, um, you know, wanting to put trees closer together, you need to you really need to understand what rootstock the, the, the tree is on. The, the maple peach, which is a red leaf, 
theme. The, if we wanted a theme, we could find one that's just basically New Zealand farm uh, tree, um, seedling trees and all that. And like, like I said, the Tropicana, that's uniquely found in New Zealand. And Mabel is another one. And the Louisa Plum, of course. Is that an apple? Uh, Mabel is a peach. It's a red, red, red deep peach and the, like the Louisa, you know. So we, we do have quite a few um, um, trees that are found in New Zealand. And mm. we, we could use that as a theme. Yeah, just, just yeah, the yeah. Just on the side. So that's about that's about it <laughs> it, um, on the children's garden and the orchard. Thank you for coming and and indeed for your questions about the children's garden. Mm. We, as I say, the children's garden is a really well used garden. Mm. It is something that hopefully kids and adults can learn a lot from and it has some great learning opportunities for plant diversity and plant habitats and yep that's it.